What's going on my friends? My name is Ngoni. Today I'm here at Team Foxcoin. We got Lonobo for Lolo who is going to break down to you what is Bitcoin and actually ways you can make money from Bitcoin and also the business that we're involved in. So stay tuned. Now who can stop me? I'm in the zone. Competition's none in a league of my own. All about the dumb. Good day, good people. Uh, my name is Lonobo for Lolo and I want to welcome you to our channel um, today. And um, so today I've got something very, very special that I want to communicate with you guys. Um, you know, this is arguably, you know, one of the best inventions since the internet. And um, so you might have guessed this right now. I'm actually talking about Bitcoin. All right. So there's quite a lot of um, information, you know, or, or misinformation floating around in terms of what Bitcoin really is. And um, so I just want to clear, you know, just a few of those misconceptions so that we can get to understand a little bit what Bitcoin is all about. And uh, and if need be, you know, be able to position ourselves in the right direction of this trend. One thing I've discovered over the last few years, you find that if you look at the right, the rich people, um, you find that, you know, these are ordinary people who have simply identified a trend, uh, you know, early enough and position themselves on the right side of the trend. And by doing so, they have become wealthy over the years. You know, um, I mean, if we were to talk about this particular topic right now, Bitcoin, for example, you know, Bitcoin back in 2010, when the first Bitcoin transaction happened, you know, by the end of the year, you know, Bitcoin was hardly $1. Um, but look at it right now. One Bitcoin is worth, you know, almost $10,000. You know, see how the value of this currency has actually progressed. So don't worry. We'll talk about, you know, how you can actually catch up and um you know what this thing you know actually means for all of us okay so today we are talking bitcoin so i've spent you know the last three years of my life um solely working on bitcoin you know educating the people about bitcoin and uh, i've seen hundreds and hundreds of people learn about what bitcoin position themselves you know change their lives um with the information that i'm going to be giving you today so stay put and uh, as we discuss what Bitcoin is all about. So, so basically, I like to break it down into three parts. One, one being uh, Bitcoin is one, a currency. All right, so Bitcoin is a currency just like your rand if you're in South Africa, the US dollar, the British pound, the Chinese yen, you know, um, there's just a few differences, you know, with those currencies and Bitcoin, the currency. I'll talk about a few. Number one, if you look at all fiat currencies, you know, fiat currencies being the normal currencies that we know, your rand, your dollar, British pound, your Chinese yen, you know, those are fiat because they are literally not backed by anything, you know, except the government promised that, you know, that they are actually worth something. So fiat currencies, if you look at over the last, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, you'll notice one thing that all of them have in common, and that is they lose buying power all the time. That's got to do with how fiat currencies are created. But if you look at Bitcoin, on the other hand, you will see that over the last 10 years, you know, the value of Bitcoin has, has risen to the top. Yes, of course, you know, in between it goes up and down, but you can see the trend is actually upwards, you know. And, um, you know, I said to people that uh, actually Bitcoin was designed to do exactly what it's doing. On the other hand, fiat currency is also designed to do what it's doing. You know, it's by no surprise. But I'll get into a little bit of detail, you know, just now. So it is a currency, meaning you can use it to buy goods and services, um, especially over the Internet. Um, it's, it's actually created to be, you know, the money of the Internet um, that you can exchange, you know, with people or service providers via the Internet. OK, but we'll explain that more. So it is a currency. Secondly, Bitcoin is a currency. It's not owned or controlled by any government. You know, I remember one day I was in Dubai. And uh, my local currency, when I'm coming from South Africa, you know, it has, he has got one of the global icons. His name is Mandela. So I went to this particular shop and um, I greeted, you know, this gentleman that was serving me. And I said, you know, do you know who is on this paper? And they said, yes, this guy is Mandela. So I said to them, all right, so I'm going to give you this currency that has Mandela on. I'm looking for that. Um, I was looking for a, a, a cover for my phone. And, um, and this guy said, no, we don't want Mandela. They took out their own local currency and says, this is what we're looking for. You know, so 
Um, so meaning as much as my currency had the global icon, you know, respected worldwide, but my currency is limited to only South Africa. So meaning if I go to any particular country, I'll then have to convert my rents into their local currency so that I'm able to trade. So meaning local currencies, you know, are, are you know, uh, actually bound, you know, geographical, you know, um, I can only use the rent in South Africa and so forth. So, so bitcoin is a global currency that you can use in any particular country right so and then the second thing about bitcoin is you know some refer to it as a commodity all right and i'll explain why people do refer to it as a commodity if you look at gold you know i remember in 1995 an ounce of gold was sitting at around 400 us dollars is probably sitting right now at about 1,300 US dollars. So over the years, what has gold done? Gold has actually gone up in value, beating inflation. So, you know, why does gold do that? You know, there's a various reasons. One of them is the fact that, you know, gold is scarce. You're not gonna walk around and, you know, find a piece of gold somewhere. You know, there's an element of scarcity. And even if they do find gold deposits elsewhere in the world, you'll find that it's actually such a very expensive exercise for you to be able to get gold out of the ground. So, so that is why, one, there's an element of scarcity, you know? And all of us do believe that, that uh, you know, bit, uh, gold is actually, you know, precious metal, all right? So, you can do the same with Bitcoins. There will only be 21 million Bitcoins who ever exist. So, as far as the element of scarcity, Bitcoin is much more scarce compared to gold because there will only be 21 million units of this currency called Bitcoin. Whereas if you look at gold, for example, someone might discover new gold deposits elsewhere in the world, you know, and then they'll start digging it up and uh, start, you know, selling it. So as far as Bitcoin, there will not be any more new Bitcoins added. Anything added after that, it's no longer Bitcoin. It's called an altcoin, meaning an alternative coin. All right. So Bitcoin is a commodity. As, uh, as I said before that, uh, um, you know, in 2010, one Bitcoin was less than a dollar. But right now, if you're looking at one Bitcoin, it's sitting at, you know, close to 10,000 US dollars. So that's because of the element of scarcity. So the more people want to use, you know, or buy or hoard Bitcoin is the more the price of Bitcoin literally goes up. Okay. And we'll also talk about the use case of Bitcoin. Why do people actually want to use Bitcoin? All right. So the third thing about Bitcoin is it is a payment system. Payment system. Okay. So now going back to currencies, if I've got a, you know, let's say I've got $50 with me and uh, I've got a brother, a cousin or whoever, uh, someone who needs this $50 and this person is not in the same city that I am in, you know, um, they're in the other side of the town or the other side of the country, um, you know, or they could even be, you know, overseas, you know, in a different country than where I am. So for me to be able to send them this currency, I will actually need a third party payment system, you know. So currency is exactly that a currency. But then over and above that, for this currency to work, you need payment systems, you know, around it. So in this case, if I've got this $50, I need to send it to this guy. If it's a local, you know, uh, um, I will then use the banks. Um, I mean, we've got also shops where you can actually send this money and they will go and collect it in that shop. So I will then do the third party. Of course, the third party is there to make a profit. So they're there to provide a service, but at the very same time, they are there to make a profit. So meaning they will then charge me to, to, to actually send this money to the person that I'm sending it to. So meaning if, if the $50 is all I had, by the time it gets to that guy, it's not going to be $50, okay? It's going to be less because I will get charged. Possibly that guy will also get charged as well, okay? So if you look at Bitcoin, on the other hand, Bitcoin is not just a currency. It's not just a commodity. Bitcoin is also a payment system on its own. We call it a peer-to-peer a payment network meaning so for if i need to send money to you i do not need a third party you know i could download a bitcoin wallet you could also download a bitcoin wallet you know i'll get your bitcoin wallet address and i can simply send money you know um you know the the uh, the, the equivalent you know bitcoin value 50 dollars send it to you and it's going to take literally a matter of seconds and you will have the money it will cost me almost nothing and it will cost you almost nothing as well to receive this currency so, but on the other hand, 
If I'm sending money right now to someone outside of my home country, which is South Africa, it will take, you know, a couple of days. And on top of that, the fees are so exorbitant. I remember one guy, he works as a lecturer in one of the South African universities. And this guy is coming from Ghana. So I asked him, do you still send money home? He says, yes, of course, I do send money home. And I asked him, so please tell me, how do you send this money home? And this guy says to me, I use MoneyGram, PayPal and Western Union, you know. Um, but mostly I use MoneyGram. So ask him, so how much do they charge? He says, you know, around 10%. Um, you know, that's how, that's how many fees I actually pay, around 10%. So, I mean, 10%, that's a lot of money. So if this guy is sending a million dollars, this means he's gonna, it's gonna cost him $100,000 fees. Imagine those 10% every single month, you know. So people all over the world, you'll find that the forex market, that's foreign exchange, people sending money to and fro, they use, you know, like a bank's PayPal, Western Union, and so forth. You know, that market is worth six trillion US dollars a day. So if you think about that a minute, and um, imagine if only 10% of those people start moving money around the world using Bitcoin instead of using their local currency. They will save on time, they will save on fees. It's a much safer and a much faster way of sending money anywhere around the world, you know. So that is why part of what we do, you know, a major part of what we do is educating the public for free what Bitcoin is all about, you know, the use case of Bitcoin. So in this case, that's, you know, uh, uh, me sending money to someone elsewhere in the world, you know, it's much faster, much safer. I remember first week of December last year, somebody did a transaction where they sent Bitcoins worth $600, 600 million US dollars, sent it to one account, and it literally took only, you know, a few seconds, and the cost was only $6, $6. Try and do that with your traditional payment systems and see how much it's going to cost you. All right. So, just to go over what we said, Bitcoin is a currency, it's a commodity, you know, meaning you can buy and hold on to it. You know that in the future, you know, the value of Bitcoin will go up as it has over the last 10 years. And thirdly, Bitcoin derives most of its value from the fact that it's a payment system, you know. So, more and more people are starting to use Bitcoin as a way to send money anywhere around the world. You know, censorship resistant, faster, cheaper, and much easier to send money anywhere around the world. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, that is Bitcoin. So in the next video that I'm going to do, we're going to be talking about how do we then get involved? You know, what are the opportunities that are involved in this new phenomenon called Bitcoin? All right. So I'm excited about that part because I've seen it literally change lives of people, you know, right before my eyes. And of course, it changed my life as well. You know, I remember before I got into Bitcoin, I was just a struggling entrepreneur, you know, selling properties, you know, um, business was up and down and so forth, you know, up until I got into, into Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining, which I will explain, you know, that's when my life started to change for the better, of course. Stay tuned. Cheers.